In other world news, you know how things haven't been going so great between us and North Korea, relationship rise, we've had a rough patch? Well, they're not getting any better anytime soon. The UN Security Council this week approved a new round of sanctions against North Korea, and they're severe. They're taking Kim Jong-un's iPad away for a week. That's <laughs> The hope is that the new sanctions will force North Korea to change its behavior because that worked so well the last 15 times we tried it. But in response to the sanctions, North Korea has threatened to cause the United States, quote, the greatest pain and suffering it has gone through in its entire history. Which I hate to break it to you guys, we already kind of did that to ourselves back in November. But <laughs> it's, it's not something... It's not something to be taken lightly. They have... You know, they have nuclear weapons, and, and they have an unpredictable dictator running things. Most experts believe they now have missiles can, that can reach at least the West Coast, which is where we all are here right now. And I don't know. I like to be prepared in situations like this. We hear a lot to do about what to do in an earthquake, but not much about how to deal with a nuclear attack. So we got in touch with an expert, Dr. Erwin Redliner. He's the director of the National Center for Disaster Preparedness at Columbia University. He knows what to do, so I grabbed Guillermo, and we met him at the first place I would go if disaster strikes. Hello, Dr. Redliner. I'm Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy, how are you? Very good. This is my Guillermo. associate, I'm Guillermo. Like, I'm all, sir, Welcome nice to, to my you. Uh, office. Well, yeah. thank you for meeting us here. I really sure. appreciate it. Yeah. Because we've been worried, right? Yeah, very much. I'll really? take off my glasses. Um, yeah. We're worried about nuclear attack. We're here in California. We're on the West Coast. And yeah. I know you're director yeah. of this National Center for Disaster Preparedness. Right. Yeah. Explain it to us like we're children. Yes, like because kids. We kind of uh, are. I, I could do that. So. Okay. First of all, background is that, and white people are so worried about this, during the Cold War... Only, you say white people? I didn't, but you can. He said white people. Why? I white thought you said white people also. You did? But white people are worried about that. I mean, all well, people are yeah, worried I think are all worried people about. are worried about yeah. it. Yeah. It used to be that people were worried during those years that the United States and the Soviet Union, both having tens of thousands of nuclear weapons, would start a war in minutes that could basically wipe out, you know, everybody on the planet. So we those... didn't want that. No, no one wants that. Who would want that? If North Korea, for instance, yeah. were to launch nuclear missiles, like, how soon would they get there? Like, if we ordered chicken wings right now, would the chicken wings get here first, or would the missiles get here first? I don't know. What, how's the service here? I don't know. But, yeah. I, and I think it it's on... easy to order a shot of tequila, because it doesn't take too long. You're right. You're right. But that's not... You're missing the point, Guillermo. So let's say North Korea launches missiles. Is it possible that we wouldn't know it was coming? Well, we probably now we're on high alert, and we would know it's coming. The question is, would we be able to stop it from actually hitting us? Uh -huh. uh, presumably, you know, we have the technology that might uh, make that possible. Hopefully, that would be the case. Well, nothing ever works. I try to order pay-per-view, and I, I can't what do happened? it. Yeah, yeah I, I fail. And yeah. so I'm worried that we have the same deal yeah. going with our technology. And how do we know that we've been attacked? Are we going to see smoke or something? So if you become aware of the fact that there's been a nuclear detonation, how would you know that a gigantic flash of light, like a thousand times more powerful than the sun, you have about a few seconds, then you hear this tremendous explosion and a force of wind that would be like, you know, a thousand, you know, hurricane harvests. It would just be really? enormous. But the farther you are away from the detonation, the more chance you have of actually surviving if you know a few simple rules about it. I'm going to write these down. Write them down. So here's, the, here's the big rule. You want to put as much shielding between you and the outside. And if you can get to the center of the building, away from the uh, windows, not too close to the top because radiation is going to fall on the roof. And uh, the, the more interior you are and the more protection you'll have, the more likely you will be able to survive. You know, the main thing is to get out of harm's way immediately. You've got 15 to 20 minutes, and that's it. And then you've got to be inside someplace with provisions to let you stay for 24 or 48 hours. Will we have Wi-Fi at that time? You you won't. Or you might, actually. You know, well, what's the point you're... of being alive if we don't have Wi-Fi, really? I mean, you might as well it's a point. go up it's, on the it's, roof. It's, and... it's a point. As you might as well as as I, take it. As you know, long as I have tequila, I don't care about the Wi-Fi. OK. All right. <laughs> Los Angeles, for example, since we're here, if a nuclear a bomb yeah. or a briefcase uh, is, explodes here. Yeah. Take us through that. Well, oh, I just happen to have with me my wallet-sized map. You carry this around? I do. I, I always just to bump people out. You never know when people are going to ask a question. Like that. Okay. So, so you'd have ground zero here, mm -hmm. and 
within a half a mile of the actual detonation, there would be no life left, and every building would be destroyed, all, everybody would be gone. But this is very tight in there, so if you're up here, if you're three, four, five miles from ground zero, you are going to be alive, most that likely. That surprises me. I'm, yeah. I, I'm really now, surprised you know, by how small the area is. The problem is going to be, if you're here and your wife is working down here, right. your kids are going to school over here, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Because most of us would want to go get our loved ones. It's right? going to be a nightmare. You're wearing an aluminum foil hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, but this is for safety. Yeah. You know. But yeah. the Dodgers are going to be OK, it looks like. It depends on who they're playing. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. might or might not be. Okay. So if you live in the, in the valley. Yeah. In the valley, so you'll be safe. Well, no, he's just using this as an example. It's just an example. Oh, yeah. oh my God, I thought it was going to happen downtown. No, no, nothing's going to happen downtown. I mean, it's, he's just saying it's an example. Oh, OK, I was so happy. I said, I live in the valley. I'm going to be safe. Yeah, no, you're not. You want to go play some games? I'd love to play some games. Me too. Oh, okay. Yeah, come back forward a little bit. There you go. All right. We're going All right. For it. I'm going for it. Go wish, for wish it. Luck. Okay. All right. Here we, we go. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got one. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, Kim Jong-un wins again. <laughs> That's where you go. Hide in the claw machine. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe. And if you don't, click subscribe. This invisible hamster will die.